Barcelona, after five years apart in the sixth year, win their third EHF Final Four. They are monumental because what they have just done this season may never be repeated. They had the perfect season from top to bottom, winning every game, both domestically and in the HF Champions League. And really, there was no stopping them. But then... There was going to be one hell of a challenge on his hands as he needed to grab this new team and begin a transition process, but deliver success immediately. Yo sabía sabía que la llegada no iba a ser ni mucho menos fácil, pero tampoco pensaba que iba a ser tan difícil. Vamos, poco de uno contra uno, poco de uno contra uno, ahí va, otra más, vale. Y hay tiro, y hay tiro. ¡Ya hay tiro! Sin apenas jugar partidos, ya se nos exigía cosas, ¿no? Any little mistake was going to be jumped on by everyone involved. ¿Vale? Escucha. ¡Vamos a un cambio! Luego, si podemos, el segundo. ¿Vale? Era indudable que no podíamos mantener la racha de victorias que se tuvo la temporada pasada. Esa era una cuestión de tiempo. Also, with Antonio Carlos Ortega's new system that he was trying to put into place, we knew it was going to take time. Eso, un poco de uno contra uno, solo choque. Contacto a media cinta, seis veces, dale. Vamos. Me gusta mucho el contacto, el juego agresivo. Empiezan dos a defender, tres a atacar. Allí hace falta por lo menos tres. Muy bien, sigue. Vamos, ataca. Barça knew that it was not going to be the perfect group phase for them. But the real true test for them was going to be in the middle of the group, the back-to-back -back matches, home and away, against Womza, Viva, Kielce. Espero que estiguin preparats per un gran partit d'handbol. Un Barça, Kielce, que pot ser ben bé una final continental. Ha aturat una altra vegada Wolf. Kielce té molts recursos i moltes maneres de jugar. A week later, however, they had the opportunity to turn things around. For the vast majority of this incredible match, it seemed like they really had it in their hands and they looked like they were going to re-establish themselves as the top dogs in this group. 23 to 27 in the marcador. We had to take this game. I think we played much better and that it was the last five minutes where it escaped. In this way, he regalat the partit al Barça. Dominava 23 a 27 i amb un parcial de 6 a 0 en els últims 6 minuts acaba perdent 29 a 27. Fue el momento más complicado de la temporada. ¿no? Creo que esas derrotas también han herido a los jugadores. Nos han forjado el carácter para seguir trabajando. A partir de entonces metimos un poco más el staff, la mano en las cosas que habían que mantenerse y cosas que pensábamos que tenía que cambiar. En ataque hemos modificado cosas para, para que nuestro ataque sea más fluido, para que tener más continuidades y más recursos. There's the brand new Barça team coming out in February. Finally, the systems that Antonio Carlos has put into place has been really grasped by the players. They've 
they've still managed to come out of this bloodbath of a group in the top two and get a direct passage into the quarterfinals. Although the two games were fairly close over the two legs, it never looked like anything but a Barca victory and they'd be booking their ticket to yet another EHF Final Four in Cologne. Pies en el suelo, pies en el suelo. Perfecto. The final of the Champions League against Kiel, it was a really bad moment. The champions in 2020 are THW Kiel. And another heartbreak really for Barcelona. We will do everything, everything as possible to win this one. It's always special to play against Kiel. And you have like this atmosphere because it's historical, it's like rivality. We have Dika Mem who, when he's in top form, is almost impossible to stop. But there's a big question mark for him as well and his ability to really deliver on the big occasions. If they can manage to pull off what they need to pull off, then Barca might just become the first team in the history of the competition to win in Cologne two years in a row.